Praise the Lord. I want to tell you a secret. What you planned this year, you reap next year. This is a year of forward. It's a year of forward. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So if it is a year of forward, you must, you must do what? Forward and forward without breaks. And forward and forward. Praise the Lord. Not looking behind. Why? This year determines next year. And so the way you forward this year, praise the Lord, your speed and acceleration determines your, the results of next year. Lift your hands up. Begin to receive the anointing of forward. Appreciate the love of God. What is the secret of this year? Worship. Worship. When you worship God, you will hear his voice. Like me when I worship him. You know, I was in my own world. Why? Because I just see the presence of God. <laughs> and I can hear the angels singing in the, in, the, in, the, in the voice of the Holy Spirit telling me, sing like this. Sing like this. Sing like this. Lift your hands up. Every song you sing, everything you do must be controlled by the Holy Ghost. If you're not being controlled by the Holy Ghost, you become a nuisance. Refuse to be a nuisance. Say of Holy Spirit, everything I do, I surrender to you. I no longer live, but you live in me. A powerful hunger for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When you want breaking breakthroughs with God, have you given him food? What do you have in your hands? Worship. You have what? Worship. Praise the Lord. And so when you worship God in truth and in spirit, what will he do? <laughs> Give you everything. With fully measured of a blowing, breaking, breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift your hands up. Huh? Jesus has said he will do great things. And he has already started doing great things in his house today. Appreciate the Lamb of God. <laughs> Say yes, Lord. Yes, I don't sing that song anyhow. I just stood here. And the song I started singing is for our father in the Lord, Prophet T.B. Joshua. He loves it so much. He's never in a hurry. I worship you, I live. I worship you, I live. I live, I live to worship you. And I saw his spirit everywhere. And I said, Jesus, wow. My father in the Lord is in the house. Prophet T.B. Joshua. You see, I don't know who is your spiritual father, but God gave me one man, and Jesus himself revealed to me this one man. And if his spirit is hovering in the house as a father, I salute Jesus, the spirit of the man of God in the synagogue, the prophet of all nations, is in the house. And the spirit of Prophet T.B. Joshua is in the house. Lift your hands up and say, Lord Jesus, I connect to this great intercessor. Say, I connect to this great mentor. I connect to this great intercessor. Connect with the great intercessor. Thank you, Lord. Appreciate him. Hallelujah. Mm. He's a very powerful intercessor. Appreciate the love of God. I don't know why Jesus to bring his spirit in the house. But good things are ahead. It means the Father's anointing will flow today. Amen. 
appreciate him. Revelations chapter 21. The Pentamitic anointing. God is God of all mystery. And because he's a God of mystery, he anoints us differently. He doesn't do his anointing the same. He can give somebody the spirit and the power of Elijah. He can give another one the Benjamitic anointing. He can give another one somebody else anointing, D.B. Joshua's anointing. He can give another one Benny Jean's anointing. He can give another one Catherine Kuhlman's anointing. But the almighty God is unique. And he is so unique that he equally anoints us differently but very powerfully. So I thank you, Lord. I receive your anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. And so this God is all God of mystery. He can never be understood. He can never be programmed. And so today, the Benjamitic anointing is in the house. I appreciate the Lamb of God. And the Spirit of great God has taken over. The Spirit of God of Israel has taken over. The Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth is in the house, has taken over. The Spirit of great might has taken over. The Spirit of great understanding has taken over. There you go! Shekinah! Yes, in 2017, as it was ending, the end of 2016, not 17. I was in scorn. And when I was in the synagogue church of all nations, as usual, I seek for his anointing so much before I go home. And yes, Satisa on the dot, I saw four bottles. I saw four bottles. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. I saw four bottles. Praise the Lord. Amen. Assuming these are four bottles. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so I saw four bottles. The one in the middle is anointed water. And the one standing like this is anointed oil. And when I looked at that, I was so happy. But immediately, handwritings were written. And I saw Sardius anointing. And when I checked what is Sardius, Sardius, precious stones anointing. Sardius means ruby. And so ruby, precious stones anointing. At the end of it all is what's written, the Benjamitic anointing. The Benjamitic anointing. Where I went, the synagogue church of all nations, Jesus Christ himself appeared. I did not watch Emmanuel TV. I appeared and say, I want you to go to the synagogue church of all nations. Prophet TB Joshua will deliver you. In the spirit of my father, is in the house of Shekinah today. And I salute you, Jesus, because without a mentor or a fika father, nobody can have the double portion of the Holy Spirit. Nobody can walk with the double portion of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And so, I am anointed with the unlimited power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because there is a man behind it. There is a man that has laid hands on me, delivered me, laid hands on me, prayed for me, delivered me, delivered me for so many years. Yes, I have known this man since 2008. The 2nd of July, 2008. When Jesus revealed 
This vision I saw Jesus, so torn, surrounded by prophets and apostles. Prophet T.P. Joshua was inside, and Jesus was telling me, go for the impartation. Go for the impartation of holiness and righteousness. And Jesus told me now, open the internet. When I opened the internet, on the door, then I saw the first vision prophet T.B. Joshua saw about Jesus is Jesus was so tall, surrounded by apostles and prophets. And he was one of the apostles. It was a shock. It was a shock. I say, Lord, I am sorry. I am sorry. Thank you for giving me a mentor, Father. I want to exalt your holy name, Moshe Kaina. I want to lift your hand. You name her, oh Lord Jesus, because you gave me the best mentor in the world. You've given me the best prophet and the best mentor in the world. I am a child of the Holy Ghost. And to be a child of the Holy Ghost. With the Benjamitic anointing, we move forward, we move forward, we move forward of a touching, of a touching, because Jesus has commanded. Ah! Oh! Faith is my currency. Faith is your currency. All you need is the word of a prophet. All you need is the word of a prophet. Accept, believe, and follow the word of a prophet. You will be prosperous. I am prosperous because I listen to my father in the Lord. The stories is not a barrier. He comes, he mentored me. In spirit, he mentors me. In spirit, he mentors me. In visions, he appears. In dreams, he appears. Turn to your neighbor. Who is your father in the Lord? Hey! You see, you don't understand people that walk with the Benjamitic anointing. Because the Bible says Benjamin was the only child of Israel that was born in the promised land without a curse. Without a curse. In Torah and in the books of Israel, up to now they say Benjamin is one man that is known amongst four men that was walking with the Shekinah glory, the Shekinah glory, the Shekinah glory. Hey, what is Shekinah glory? The presence of the God of Israel. And so nobody will close us down. How can devils and demons and human beings fight? Appreciate the Lamb of God. Say yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The anointing of the ravenous wolf. Eh? We take it like nobody's be We attack our assignment. By the time Satan comes, it is too late. Amen. Lift your hands up. Say, I, I am a Benjamite. I take the anointing very seriously. So, you can put your hands up. So, this is oil. This is this. This is this. This is how I got the Benjamitic anointing. I came and researched, Lord, what is Sardius anointing? Sardius precious stone anointing which I will take you through the book of Revelation. Lord Jesus, who is Benjamin? What is the story of Benjamin? I studied it, and I found out he was the last born of Israel that was born in the promised land and never was a man that was working with a curse. He was a blessed man, so blessed. I also researched so many and deep things about Benjamin. And so when I go to Israel, I'm just interested in one thing, the emblem of the ravenous wolf. Amen? And I know where they live in Israel. 
after Jerusalem, before Jericho, along the river Jordan, I can still watch. You will be sure there goes the Benjamites. And they are very proud. The Israel will tell you that those, the whole of this land is for Benjamin. They guard and they protect the Israel. They are always in the border. We say this about the Benjamins, that Benjamins are best setters. We say that the Benjamins are best setters because at the time the Red Sea was being crossed, these other big tribes feared and the Benjamitic last bone crossed over and just went through the Red Sea. We also say the Benjamins are best setters because Amongst the 12 disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, all of them, apart from Judas Iscariot and Jesus Christ of Nazareth, came from the tribe of Judah, the big tribe of Judah. But Benjamin, hallelujah, all of them, including Paul, including Paul, including Apostle Paul, all of them, including the man that replaced Judas Iscariot, came from which tribe? They came from the tribe of Benjamin. And so they are best setters. We also said that the people ruling Israel, not because they are Benjamins, but because God gave them the grace of great leadership. All the prime ministers of Israel, which is like our presidents, they come from one tribe. The little tribe of Benjamin. Are they rich? No. Those that live in Jerusalem and those that live in, 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 in Nazareth are stinking billionaires. But the Benjamitic live. Live where? Along River Jordan. And they guard the territories of Palestine. Hallelujah. And the Israelites. And so these are besetters. I say including Benjamin Netanyahu. This tribe are besetters. They are the one ruling Israel. Hallelujah. They lead. They are presidents of Israel. And I say... The kind of politics that is in Israel is not a joke. You find that these bigger tribes want to bring theirs, but always a Benjamite. And a Benjamite must emerge and be the prime minister. Lift your hands up. The grace of leadership, hallelujah, has been given to you. Receive it. From today, you are best setting in everything you are doing. Put your hands down. We also say that Benjamitic people and Benjamitic anointed people are protectors of the highest order. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you look at Jonathan, son of Saul, and Saul was the first king of Israel. Are you getting it? Right from Saul, the people that have been kings of Israel come from one tribe. Saul was the first king of Israel. And he came from the Benjamitic. Benjamitic what? Amen. Now tell your neighbor, I am a Benjamin. I have the Benjamitic anointing. I can never fail in my assignment. As long as God has instructed me, I cannot fail in my assignment. Hallelujah. You will not fail. In none of your assignments will be thwarted. They will come for you very soon. I say they will come for you. They will seek your solutions. They will come for your ideas. Amen. So what is the way forward? Walk with love. They will come. I'm telling you, they will come and seek for your products. They will come and seek for your products. They will come and seek for your products. From your own businesses. Businesses. Appreciate the Lamb of God. Jonathan. Jonathan respects the anointing so much. Benjamitic people respect the anointing. That is why when Moses was like, could we cross? 
they said, oh, Moses, you are an anointed man of God. We are following what you want us to do. Why do they respect the anointing so much? Because their father, Benjamin, was a carrier of Shekinah glory. The presence of God. It means the people that will carry the spirit of this ministry, hallelujah, will also be carriers of Shekinah glory. And wherever they go, they are lovers of the almighty God. And they cannot be sukumad. They will always be rushing to do the things of God. I appreciate the love of God. And so Jonathan took the second place and decided that David was going to be a king instead of him. That is who the Benjamitic people are. When God tells us, follow this one, we follow it. But it must be God. Hallelujah. It must be God. How is it possible that it should be, it should be the tribe of Judah? That Jesus Christ of Nazareth should have appointed. But you went and appointed the least. And the least. And the least that were bordering the ship in the Sea of Galilee. These people were not learned. They never went to school. All they would do is just wake up in the morning, go to the water, catch fish in Lake Galilee. And they were all around Lake Galilee. And Jesus of Nazareth did not qualify them because of their education. He saw their stars and he knew that these are Benjamitic people and they carry the anointing. He saw and looked and said, for me to succeed with my mission, I need the best setting people. I need people that have carriers of the glory and the presence of God. And he looked at Judah. He said, thank you, Judah. And it is not you. He looked at the tribe of Reuben. He said, thank you, Reuben. You are my tribe, but it is not you. He looked at Naphtali. He said, Naphtali, you are good, but it is not you. He looked from the tribe of Joseph. And there were so many from the tribe of Joseph. And the Bible said, from the tribe of Joseph, two of his sons, praise the Lord, hallelujah, took over. And they brought two great tribes. Amen. I'll leave that one for you to, search, to research. He say, even you, you are blessed. It is true, you are dreamers. It is true, you are carriers of visions. It is true, you can interpret what will come. But you are not the one that will carry the gospel. I am looking for base setters. And so he went to this tribe. And he said, Benjamin was born in the land of Canaan alone. And Benjamin carried the Shekinah glory, my father's anointing. And so for me to succeed, I must go right to where they were born. And so he went to Lake Halili. He said, if I choose the learned, the learned will bother my mind. If I choose the highly educated, they are going to bother me. Let me go and choose the least. Because with the least, they will appreciate my glory. They will appreciate my anointing. Hallelujah. He said, with the least, those that have nothing, if I choose them, they are going to acknowledge me. And therefore, he went there and chose the 12 of them. Praise the Lord. The 11 of them about from Judas Iscariot. I don't know what Judas Iscariot was doing in, in around that place. Because these are people that came from the Benjamitic people. Hallelujah. The Benjamitic tribe. And so he chose the best setting tribe. And that is why the gospel is still pioneered by best setting people. So, if you have these characteristics, you are very courageous in life. Why? Because the Lord has said and the Lord has appeared, you have the Pentamitic anointing. I am talking to you. Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter where you are born. It doesn't matter where you come from. If you find yourself always leading, besetting, leading, besetting, leading, you have the Benjamitic anointing. If you have find yourself appreciating great leaders and say, oh no, this is a great leader, come here. You know, giving your, your position for the sake of a good, a great character or a godly person, then you have the Benjamitic anointing. 
Those are great characteristics. If you find yourself defending your people, defending your family, defending your children, even when they are wrong, you are specially and a special, you are a special person. You are a Benjamite. Hey! Praise the Lord. And that is typical of our father. The Bible says his eyes are 24-7 on the righteous. His ears are attentive 24-7. You see, his eyes are on the righteous like this. It is typical of our father defending his children, protecting his own, and blessing his own. Appreciate the honor, Shekinah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And specifically, the Bible says, in Saul was very handsome. Very, very handsome. And so from the tribe of Saul came people that are very, very handsome, especially the men. Very handsome. Look at yourself. If you are so beautiful and handsome, know that you are a Benjamitic. Yeah. How do you know that you are beautiful and handsome? The glory of God lives in us. Hallelujah to the love of God. You see, the way you judge things is not the way God judges things. When God looks from heaven and sees the glory, his glory in a humanity, they are so precious. They are so handsome. They are so beautiful. Look at your neighbor. I say you are so anointed. And I see the anointing in your face. So that anointing, hallelujah, is what makes you a human being, a powerful and, and, and a wonderful human being. Anointed people are very handsome. I say anointed people are flexible and very beautiful and very handsome. The Holy Spirit is pushing me very dangerously to look into your eyes and say you are beautiful, you are wonderful, you are handsome you are awesome created by the image and the likeness of God. You are a carrier of the blood of the handsome one. Hey! Jesus of Nazareth was very thin. Very thin. How do I know? <laughs> I saw Jesus physically when he was in the cross. Very thin. Hmm? And I was like, is it you, Jesus? Is it you, Jesus? And Jesus would fall and fall and fall. I know I saw him physically when he was 30 years old. I've also seen him, hallelujah, when he was 12 years old. But when I behold the Lord of glory, he's so beautiful, so handsome. So glorious. So handsome, so glorious. Why? With the anointing he carries, he is so handsome. He is so glorious. If this Lord of glory lives in me and you, we are very powerfully handsome and very powerfully beautiful. Appreciate the Lord of all glory. Say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So today, it just as you were worshiping, he came down and anointed me. I was seeing the rivers, the seven rivers of the Holy Ghost entering into my eyes, in my belly. And now I knew I was ready to come to the pulpit. I don't step in this building without the anointing, the power of the omnipotent God. 
I don't step in this building unless he anoints me. So I am here and I'm anointed. Why he anointed me before I step in the pulpit? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the voice you're hearing is anointed. The words you're hearing are anointed. And so I go with the flow. Lift your hands up. Say, I am a child of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Revelation 21. Now I saw a new heaven. Say, a new heaven. Say, a new heaven. Say, I receive a new heaven. And a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Amen. The first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, I turned so the holy city said, the holy city. A new Jerusalem. Say the new Jerusalem. The city of God. Hallelujah. Look here. Look here. This is menorah. This is menorah. In downright, this menorah is written the new Jerusalem. Did you know that? Hello! The new Jerusalem is going to be like this menorah. Amen? Amen. And that is why it is the emblem of the tribe of Israel. This is the emblem of the tribe of Israel. It is all over in the Talits. It is all over na bendera yao. Bendera yetu yiko na mikuki. Yao yiko na yi. Praise the Lord. And down right here, praise the Lord, hallelujah, is written the new Jerusalem. Ndiyo mana tunawakisha kila, tunawakisha kila? Tina wakati tunawakisha, tunawona the new Jerusalem. Now I want you to pay attention and listen keenly on how the new Jerusalem looks like. This. If you look at this, you look at a tree of life. If you look at this, keenly, you look at a Christian worshipping God like this. If you look at this, keenly, you look at the cup of the Holy Commission. Holy Commission. Is it true? Ukiona hii kabisa inakaa kama kikombe cha damu ya Yesu Kristo. If you look at this kindly, it looks like a man or a woman worshipping God. Is it true? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. The new Jerusalem will be like this. Jesus revealed to me. It is going to be like this. Now let us just read it kindly. Amen. It says, then I turn saw the holy city. The new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. And by the way, everywhere I go, I must have menorah. Why? It is divine revelations. Today, the Lord told me, take the menorah, put it here. And he told me, as you will speak today, I will take you back to the menorah. He said, when you look at Revelation 21, look at the menorah. The new Jerusalem will come down like the menorah. But look at the glory. See the glory. Amen. It says, Then I John saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Look at a bride prepared and adorned for the husband. Are you getting it? Yes. Amen. Yes. I say, when you look at this, you look at our wall. Ah, understand me. A worshiper. A worshiper prepared for her husband. A worshiper of Jehovah Shekinah prepared for her husband. Adorned completely in the beauty and the garments of a wedding. Put your hand clap together for the Lamb of God. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying, what did he hear? A loud voice from heaven saying, 
Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Oh, I am just teaching this for the first time here. I was not given this knowledge. I was just told to go and step there and read Revelations chapter 21. Look here. It says, Behold, I heard the voice from heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. We all know what is a tabernacle of David, of King David. The Bible speaks of the tabernacle of King David. Amen? And when you look at the tabernacle of King David, they are high worshippers. They are high praisers. In the tabernacle of King David is the glory of God. How do I know? Psalms 42 says, As a dear pants for the water burgos, my soul pants for you. When can I appear in your presence? It describes King David ten times going to the house of God, seven times praising God so that the glory of God comes down. I want you to understand because revelation is taking place in the fountains of the spirit of revelation is all over in the house of God today. It say, as a dear pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants for you. When can I appear in your house? Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I long for your presence. In verse 7, Psalms 42, verse 7 say, Deep calls upon deep. It you of waterfalls, O Lord. Deep revelations. Deep revelations calls upon deep at your waterfalls. Today, there is a revelation in the house of God. There was a tabernacle of David. The book of Psalms speaks about the tabernacle of David. Psalms 142, he swore, he took an oath and he said, until the ark of the covenant comes to the city of Jerusalem, I will not sleep, I will not put my heart to slumber. And that is why God gave him the chi. And this is the chi of David that we have been imparting. Hallelujah. Number two, God also honored him very high and gave him a tabernacle. In that tabernacle is called the tabernacle of King David. Which means the end time worshippers, the end time warriors, in the end time church must have the tabernacle of King David in them. But here the Lord speaks. Hallelujah. He say, I say, and I heard a voice, behold the tabernacle of God. This is the tabernacle of God. Look here, please. Look here. If you look at it keenly, you see a heart of worship. If you look at the menorah keenly, you look at the Holy Communion, the cup of the Holy Communion. If you look at the menorah keenly, you look at a generational tree carrying seven spirits. Seven generations or seven and seven lampstands or the seven eyes of God. Are we getting it? Amen. And so the city, the new city, was coming down. And it is called what? The tabernacle of God. Behold, the tabernacle of God has come down. Appreciate the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. And now is it, it is with men. And he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Listen, why are tears very important? Why are tears very important? I ask the Lord, why do you have to mention every now and then that God has to wipe tears? Why are these tears very important? The Bible says all our tears are put in bottles and bottles. At times when I weep, I know my tears of worship. My tears of worship is inside every bottle. But wherever I cry, I allow the tears to go down. And I tell God, fill my heart and fill my brains with the drums of tears. Why they are very important. A time will come when that place of my tears will be open and I will see my shelves of my tears. 
And those tears that was, I was crying with pain, they will be there. And those tears that I was crying, worshiping God, will be there. And those tears that I was crying, praying for nations, will be there. And those tears that I was crying, wounded, will always be there. And so that is why tears are very important. According to Revelation 21, the second last chapter, it speaks that God is going to wipe away our tears. It means in this world, men must cry. Women must cry. It means especially Christians must cry. Why? We are faced with the highest opposition. We are faced with the highest opposition. We are fighting for our rights. We are fighting for our stars to shine. We are fighting for our children. We are fighting for our marriages. And as we fight for our marriages, our tears must go down. As we fight for our tribes, our tears must go down. As we fight for the politics in nations also, crying that God would bring a, a, a covenant that we will rule in righteousness. Our tears of intercessory must go down. Lift your hands up. Say, Almighty God, fill my head with the tears of righteousness so that one day when I come to heaven, you will wipe my last tear. You will wipe my last tear. Put it down. There is going to be the last tear. The Bible speaks of the last tears. After these tears, we will cry the last time. When we will see him one on one. When we will reach a new Jerusalem, we will cry for the last time. And the Almighty God will wipe our tears. It means when we go to heaven, there may not be other tears. Are you getting it? Because this body must cry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. But the tears of sorrow will end. The tears of pain will end. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And the Bible says, in the tears, in the tears will be filling bottles. It means... The more you cry in intercession, and the more you weep for humanity, and the more you weep for your soul, the more the reward. And so you better cry harder. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Are you seeing? He said, there will, there, will be, shall not be, there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor cry. <laughs> I love this. There shall be no more pain, for the former things are passed away. Then she who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write for these words are true and faithful. What does it mean? New bodies, new spirits, a new world, the new Jerusalem, the new earth. Are you getting it? Everything will be new. Amen? Appreciate the Lamb of God. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha. Are you saying, when Jesus says it is done, it means he is the Alpha and the Omega. Hallelujah. The beginning and the end, I will give of the fountains of the water of life. Freely to him who does lift your hands up and receive the fountains of the water of life. They were in the house today. I was seeing the fountains. Amen. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God. And he shall be my son. But the cowardly. The unbelieving. The abominable. The murderers. The sexually immoral. The sorcerers. The idolaters. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. Which is the second death? Let me tell you, pay attention. There can never be revival without deep repentance of sin. There can never be revival without deep exposure of sin. What you are seeing taking place in Shekinah glory has, is the birth, the birth shares signs of revival. You are seeing people saying, oh, I was masturbating like hell. It is deep, deep conversions. It is deep 
repentance. These are the bad marks of revival. When you see some of us saying, oh, eh, we were lesbians. We were gays. We were homosexuals. Yet Jesus Christ of Nazareth has delivered us. It is not for you to love. It is not for you to mock us. The more you mock us and the more you love, the more we will be led to expose. Why? When you are carriers of the key of revival, these things must take place. Black and white. We were like this, but Jesus of Nazareth has set us free. We were highly shocked and highly shocked, but Jesus of Nazareth took away, praise the Lord, the shock that was yoking us. We were in great and deep prisons, deep prisons, despite the decrees, despite the masters, but we were in deep prisons, not for one year, not for two years, so much in deep prisons, walking from one 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 stripping nightclub to another one stripping day club from a one stripping day club to another one stripping nightclub we would walk from one nightclub to another nightclub it is revival part pains revival must be born with great pains Revival must be born with great pains. Revival is not revival. It is if it is not battered without pain. It will not last. True revival takes deep repentance. People repenting of their sins. People repenting of their sins. People acknowledging that it is true. If it is not because of the Lord Jesus Christ, I would not be like this. People looking and say, no, I am still a mediocre. I am still average. And I know what is waiting. If I can just say, I have seen the hand of God, then I will know I will see the whole body. If I can just testify, I know I will kill this devil that is still maiming on my life. I was born to be excellent. I was born to excel. I was born to seriously excel. This is not my portion. I have a dream. I have a vision. But this portion in this part of me takes a testimony. So what you are seeing here is not the hand of a man. People conversing about the deep things. Deep secrets. Deep, deep secrets. There is the bad pains of revival. For something to be parted, and for anything to be parted, it has to have pain. It must pain you. We will testify of the goodness of the Lord because we don't fear the pain. We don't fear the death. We don't fear mockery. Praise the Lord. And that is why we defeat Satan. Because we have decided to testify. And that it is through the blood of Jesus has washed my sin. I have seen a glimpse of my deliverance. And if I testify, I will see the fullness of the Lord. And what is the fullness of the Lord? This menorah is the fullness of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say Jesus is typically like this menorah. It is the fullness. This is like the body of the Lord Jesus. If you look at the tree, you look at the branches, you look at the branches, you look at the seven churches, and you look, hallelujah, at the base. You see typically Jesus Christ. And so menorah was created as a woman or a man worshiping God. It was created, praise the Lord, to replicate Jesus Christ. The seven spirits of God. The seven eyes of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Where are they? The body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up. Say, speak, Lord. I am ready to obey your instructions. I will testify of your goodness. Because I want the fullness of your graces. I appreciate the Lamb of God. Satan hates 
The path pains of revival testimonies. But congratulations for those that are testifying that they were in total darkness. Total darkness. But the Almighty God rescued them. And they have never feared to face the sword. We are in this Shekinah glory in the moment of truth whereby you must hold the sword. Are you getting it? You must the whole, you hold the sword to yourself. Until you hold the sword to yourself and say, surely, I have to expose what is eating me. She will not come out of it. Why? We defeated Satan by the blood of the Lamb, which is freely given, and the word of our testimony. And number three, we don't fear death. We don't fear what? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And so, if you see people flying in this ministry, it's because they have chosen the sword to penetrate everywhere. They say, pride, I must today take the sword of Hebrews 4, 12, and put in your face. Pride must get out for you to testify. That you are running from one stripping club to another stripping club. If Satan would do that and do those wicked things to your brothers and sisters, oh, know that they are the pinch of mighty and no indeed. I say know that they have the Benjaminic anointing. The side of the tribe of Benjamin, they are romantically very romantic. You didn't understand, oh! You didn't understand, oh! They are romantically very. Excuse me. Jonathan was very, very handsome. Hello? Hello. Very romantic. Why am I talking like this? It is a topic of another day. But there is the Shekinah glory, garden of Eden romance. The Holy Spirit taught me. And that is why when you walk into this house of Shekinah, the power of marriage must work. The anointed waters must work. Where there is an evil marriage, God changes. Where there is evil romance, evil wickedness, where there is masturbation, where there is wicked sexual perversion, the Spirit of God through the Shekinah glory anointed waters changes people's lives. When you walk with the Shekinah glory anointing, you live in the Garden of Eden. Appreciate the Lamb of God. That is why my sons, when they entered here, the Lord delivered them. And they have been delivered. They are abstaining. And it has taken the grace of God. They have abstained. Amen? They have abstained from evil romance. Waiting for their ribs. And they will have wonderful lives. Appreciate Jesus for this great man. I say appreciate Jesus for this best set us. Best set us of revival in this nation. Best set us of revival in this ministry. Say hallelujah. So listen to them and encourage them. We don't beat around the bush. We just go to straight. That is why the Benjamitic anointing was given one. We go straight to the point. We say we were delivered by this, by this, by this, by this. Beating around the bush, you know. Appreciate the Lord Jesus Christ. This gospel must be preached with great embarrassment, with great mockery. That is why it is called the full gospel. If it is not the full gospel, drop it. If it is not black and white, drop it. If it is not mercy and judgment, drop it. We don't want to waste time. We say as it is. I was a gay. And this is what happened. I was a lesbian. And this is what happened. 
Hello! Why? Don't baptize sin. Nail it on the cross. Because Satan did not waste time. He tried nailing him on the cross. He saw Satan must be persecuted thoroughly. This figure, the verse of Satan, dismantle the pride of Satan, dismantle the male ego, dismantle the male ego, dismantle the women fear, dismantle the shyness. Say as it is. It is repentance. In deep repentance, in the others will follow. Repentance is delaying because we are just cosmeticing sin. Cosmeticing sin. Camouflaging sin. Counterfeiting sin. Revival is revival. When people will say, we have been visiting Revinyl in night time and we go there and we do all manner of sin. Look into this ministry. We are the Benjamites. We say as it is. Sin is sin. Let God be God. His enemies be destroyed. Appreciate the Lamb of God. And that is greatness. Greatness is holding the menorah, the sword of Hebrews 4.12. It what is the sword of Hebrews 4.12? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. What is the menorah? Seven spirits of God. Seven that are in the seven judges and having the seven angelic Holy Coast. And at the base of it is our Father. Menorah. Praise the Lord. There is a new Jerusalem. I appreciate the Lamb of God. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountains of the waters of life. Freely to him who does open the flood gates of heaven, let it flow. Woo, I feel so anointed and very strong. Why? The living waters are everywhere. He says, Who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, the cowardly, woo, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, all liars, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Verse 9, then one of the seven angels who had the seven balls filled with the seven blacks came to me and talked with me saying, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he chariot me away in the spirit to a great and a high mountain. A great and a high mountain, and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven. That is why menorah is in every shop, it is in every home, it is so many times in every home. Why? When I look at the menorah, I see the revelation Jesus taught me about the new Jerusalem. I appreciate the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. This is what it's like. Is it the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God? Having the glory of God. That is the glory of God is what? Shekinah glory. Her light was like a most precious stone. Are you seeing? Are you seeing the menorah? What is her light like? The most precious stone. Amen. See. Hallelujah. You see, likes attract likes. If you are a child of the Holy Spirit and you operate in the ministry of the Holy Spirit, hmm, you also attract, you attract what? Likes. You see, having the glory of God, her light was like a most precious stone. 
Are you seeing the lights of Enmerora? Like jasper stone, clear as crystal. All she had a great and high wall with 12 gates. This is very important. With how many gates? With how many gates? And 12 angels at their gates. And names written on them. Which are the names of the 12 tribes of, children, of the children of Israel. Including the tribe of? Talk to me. Including the tribe of? I appreciate the Lamb of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Three gates on the east. Three gates on the north. Three gates on the south. And three gates on the west. I'm reading because I need you to understand the word of God. Hallelujah. It says now, verse 14. Now the wall of the city had 12 foundations. Say 12 foundations. The wall of the? Hallelujah. Had how many? Look at a wall. It is not. Look, look at the wall of the city. It has I mean, 12 foundations. It means the city has 12 foundations. I appreciate the Lamb of God. And this is very important. This is very important. And one them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. In other words, what are the names from the tribe of Benjamin? Apostle Peter from the tribe of Benjamin. Apostle Paul from the tribe of Benjamin. Apostle James from the tribe of Benjamin. Hello! Praise the Lord. All of them, they have one thing in common. They have been meant to be the foundations of the new Jerusalem. This is very important. Praise the Lord. And he walked, and she who talked with me had a cold reed to measure the city, its gates and its wall. The city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth. And he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 fallons. Its length, breadth, and height are equal. Then he measured its wall, 144 cubits. Mm -hmm. 144 cubits. According to the measure of a man, that is of an angel, the construction of its wall was of jasper. And the city was pure cold, like clear. Clear what? And what would you say? Jasper is represent what? The tribe of? Jasper is presents the tribe of Reuben. Reuben was the firstborn of Israel. At the time, Israel cast the three sons, including his firstborn, Reuben. I said, you are my strength. Hmm? But Reuben was cast. But why the new Jerusalem is having Reuben and it is also talking about the anointing of Reuben, which is Chavsma. It's because according to Deuteronomy chapter 33, when Moses came into power, a man that was working with Shekinah glory, he reversed every curse. And when he reversed every curse, he said, let Reuben live and not die. Praise the Lord. He also reversed the curse of Levi and the brother. Is it true? Yes. And that is why God is trying to teach you. It doesn't matter what the enemy has created about you. Why would a whole man like Jacob and his children be the one, praise the Lord, having and controlling the foundations of the new Jerusalem? I ask the Lord why. He say, he, because he fought with me. He said Jacob was, carry, was a carrier of the spirit of Lucifer. Jacob, the other name Jacob of Jacob was a fraudster, a con man, a Luciferous man. But the Bible speaks that he fought with God and cried for one thing, oh, that you would bless me. What is blessings? Blessings 
his blessings with the heart of Jesus Christ, with the heart of the Almighty. Satan cannot bless you because when Satan gives you gifts, he will take it. And these gifts always turn into wickedness. He has no blessings. So blessings are blessings because it is the Father that has given good things. For something to be a blessing, it must have the characteristics of an added advantage. And this advantage is, is this, that it may have goodness and mercy. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He said, I will not leave you, Almighty God, unless you bless me. You think he was fighting with an angel? No. Jacob was fighting with the angel of the Lord, which is the Almighty God himself. I knew it because the Almighty God revealed to me. And when I looked at the Shekinah glory, I asked the Lord God Almighty, how could a man fight with you? I know your power. I have known your power. When I saw your power, I just disappeared into eternity and you are eternal. And, and, and how could a man fight with eternity? With eternity? He said, he purposed in his heart. And he said, this is surely the almighty God. Why? Because as he was touching the almighty God, the power of Satan in him was touching the glory of God. And so there is no way that you can say you are in darkness and you are fighting with an angel. No. Satan was living in Jacob. Satan himself, Lucifer himself was living in Jacob. And he knew, I have gotten an opportunity. And the Bible says he fought with his own might and with his great strength. He reviews it with his comments. And I am very sure he reviews it with the lack of God. And that is why God <laughs> made sure the lack was having, was limping. You think he was refusing with the hand of God? No. The Lord was trying to pull himself from this man. Pull himself from this man. But now there was only one thing he would just do. Make sure he was holding his leg. And when he was holding the leg of God, he was also reverencing him. He was begging him and say, Father, please, Father, please, Father, let me just worship. I am bowing before your feet. I'm reviewing with your feet. When you reviewse with the feet of the Almighty, he has nothing else but to bless you. How do you reviewse? With the, the feet of the Almighty, he say, Ah, for this reason, I was born to worship you. And to live is to worship you. To live is to worship you, Lord. To worship you, Lord. Do I know the feet of Jesus Christ? Yes. I was in Ethiopia one time and I was worshiping him. And he brought his sandals and his feet down. And I touched his feet. I just felt Jehovah Shalom taking over my life. Why Satan had come earlier and Satan actually with the darkness shook me so much because these things fought in my heart. The bright morning star and, and the morning star which is Satan and Jesus Christ met in my body physically and spirit, spiritual so I was finished. I was so finished that I, I could not wake up. And now Jesus appeared with his feet. And when we brought his feet, I touched his feet. Instantly, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Jehovah Shalom took over. And I began again to worship God. And I received my strength. I appreciate the Lamb of God. That's in Ethiopia. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Are you getting the revelation? It was not this head. He could not handle his head. He, he could not handle his heart. He fought holding everything. But he realized with the spirit of wisdom, I must, I must hold onto his feet. I must worship him. Worshiping while struggling. Fighting. Fighting. That is why until now, the Bible says, until he was going to heaven, 
Jacob was limping and seriously limping. Seriously? Seriously? Because he fought with the Almighty God. Lift your hands up. You say, I will not leave you today until you bless me. I will not leave you, Lord. God of Benjamin, I will not leave you until you bless me. And so, when Benjamin was born, the matter, the matter of Benjamin called him the son of my pain. The son of my Ben. Ben means the son. The son of my Benonin. The son of my pain. It's because I got him and he was conceived through suffering. Before Benjamin, the seed of Benjamin, went inside the mother, the devil knew and he saw the star of Benjamin. He saw the star of Benjamin and said, this will be the end time charge and this kind of anointing will be released to the end time charge and in this end time charge, they are going to crush my head. I must kill Benjamin right in the mother's womb. Rachel, hallelujah. Rachel, who was the wife of Jacob and the wife of Israel, at that time was carrying a blessed seed. Why was she, why was Benjamin a blessed seed? Because that instantly, when the Almighty God changed his name into Israel, it means he was going to give birth to a son that would defend and protect Israel. And so the Almighty God said also, I have blessed you. From today, your name will be Israel. It means you are become the chosen one and the blessed one. But Israel means a blessed prince, a blessed king. And so when the Almighty God blessed him, instantly he blessed his children. He blessed his water. He blessed his properties. And so Jacob in that time was desiring that he may have just one son that will be born as, as, as a carrier of the blessings of God. And this is what Jacob called Benjamin. He said, and as for you, Benjamin, Praise the Lord. You are a ravenous wolf. You are a ravenous wolf. You kill your prey. Your prey is your predator. You kill your enemies. You destroy your enemies. Including Satan. Including Satan that wanted to kill him. And you divide your spoil in the evening. Including evening. They can never want. Praise the Lord. There is none that is going to defeat you. Please understand it. The Holy Spirit is slowly teaching you who Benjamin was. And so when he saw that his son got a cursed name, he said, Benonin, you are the son of my suffering. The mother called him. I have suffered so much with you. When you are in the womb, Satan wanted to chill you so much. And so, and because Israel knows what names carry, he say, no, ah, this is the son of my strength. I fought with the Lord, and the strength that is in me belongs to God. He say, Benjamin, and Benjamin means the son of my, it means what? The son of my right hand. And the Bible says, what is the right hand? The right hand of God is power. It means, Benjamin, you are the son of my right hand. And the right hand of God is power. Are you getting it? Praise the Lord. And so, if Benjamin is the son of his right hand, what about the other children? What about the other children? And so, Benjamin is a carrier of the right hand of God and the right hand of God is power. 
And that power is called Shekinah glory. Appreciate the Lamb of God. Appreciate the Lamb of God. Why would Satan want to kill Benjamin so much, Lord Jesus? I say because he was a carrier of Shekinah glory. And so, the carriers of the Shekinah glory, the carriers of Shekinah glory, right in the womb, Satan will always want to kill, to destroy. Was Benjamin born tiny? Very tiny. Very tiny. How do I know Benjamin was born very tiny? Because the mother died. The mother died while giving birth to Benjamin. What does it mean? The mother was emulsated. Was she sick? Very sick. Very, very sick. How do I know? The Holy Spirit says so. If a woman gives birth and is trying to push the baby, trying to push the baby, are you getting it? And dies, praise the Lord. That is typically that 90% that woman was sick. Is it true? Hello? Is it true? Yes. Hallelujah. And so that baby was brought up by, by what? By camel's milk. Not from the mother's milk. Benjamin was not breastfed. Benjamin was brought up by the camel's milk. Praise the Lord. Are you here and you are like that? Please work for God. There is great star in you. There is a great star in you. If you are born and you are put in an incubator, incubator, it means Satan was fighting for your life and your star. Thank God you are alive. Work for God. Praise the Lord. If the mother did not care, call him the son of my sufferings. Praise the Lord. Benjamin would not live. Benjamin would not. Amen. But his father now changed and said, you are the son of my right hand. Appreciate the Lamb of God. Yes. If you look typically here in the middle, praise the Lord. What is in the middle? This is the spirit of the sovereign Lord. It is the spirit of Isaiah 61. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. Revelation chapter 1, it says, And I saw in the middle of the seven lampstands, in the middle of the seven eyes of God, in the middle of the menorah, one that was standing in the middle with the feet, Jasper. In some way, a ruby. Revelation chapter 1. And he said, and out of him came the double-edged sword. Are you seeing our emblem? Double-edged sword. Out of came the double-edged sword. And what is the double-edged sword? Hebrews 4.12. What is Hebrews 4.12? The Bible. And what is this Bible? The sword of Hebrews 4.12. Inside here, out of his mouth came the double-edged sword. Inside the middle. And this is one spirit that is in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a carrier of the seven spirits of God. This is the spirit of wisdom and revelation. This is the spirit of great might and counsel. This is the spirit of holiness. And this is the spirit of all revelation. Inside here in the middle is the carrier of the Bible. And what is the Bible? The word of God. And what is the word of God? Jesus Christ. And what is Jesus Christ? Hebrews 4. 12. For the word of God is living. The word of God is active. In the middle here. So the Bible says, praise the Lord. These 12 precious stones. Amen. Let's look at the gates first of the world. Let's look at the gates. The gate number one is Jasper, which is the gate of Reuben, the Reubenites. 
And here also we have the Rubenites, the blessed people. And the last gate is the gate of Benjamin, which is also the sardius or the ruby precious stones. Praise the Lord. Sardius, scarlet red, which depicts the blood of Jesus or the judgment of God. Hallelujah. And they say of Benjamin that he was a carrier of the Tumim and the Uri, the black and the white, or the throne of judgment and the throne of mercy. Praise the Lord. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. If Jesus Christ was in the middle of the menorah, are you getting it? And so the tribe of Benjamin were the last gates. The last one, the son of my righteous hand. In the stand, as Israel was blessing his children, he was giving them his spirit. He was giving them his spirit. But he said of these three children, you will not carry my spirit. But of Benjamin, he said, you have my spirit, but you are also the son of my right hand. And the right hand of God is power. When a man wants to bless you, they don't use the left hand. They must use the right hand. They could be left-handed. They could be left-handed. And the shade of the Benjamites, they are almost, all of them are left-handed. And great archers. Great archers. Praise the Lord. Great archers. But uh, the Benjamites are described as almost all the tribe are left-handed. Including Benjamin himself. He got into this scenario of giving birth to left-handed people. Check, you are a warrior, a defender, a protector. You carry everybody in your shoulders. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. So when you bless, you want to bless always, you must carry the right hand. The right hand. Now, finally, this is the same menorah. In the middle is the spirit of Isaiah 61. It is also menorah. The spirit of Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord. But check clearly. The foundations were having precious 12. The foundations of the wall was having 12 precious stones. But the 12 precious stone is not from the Benjamitic stone. The stone in the middle are you getting it? The stone in the middle comes from the tribe of Benjamin. Did you, did you get it? The stone in the middle. This is the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. The stone in the middle comes from the, the tribe of Benjamin. And here, the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ is the one in the middle partitioning all these other spirits. It is the pillar. It is the, which is the pillar here? The, this one in the middle. Because this one, praise the Lord, this one cannot do without the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. This one cannot do without the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. This one cannot do without the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. So even to all the 12 precious stones, they could not do without the end time church which is the spirit of Benjamin in the middle. It is always there as the pillar. Yes, he was the last one. He was the last one. But he became the pillar. He became the pillar. Shekinah!